week's edition of the Phantom Zone podcast. Alan is already being mean to Chris. Let's talk about Legends of Tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> Alan's uh, taking his... Time uh... to love chips. I mean, okay. I love chips, but there's a time and place for everything. Get your damn yeah. hand in the can. Let's, uh, let's, let's Legends of Tomorrow out. was the best episode of the week, for like third, fourth week in a row. Yeah, yep. anytime, anytime you introduce assault rifles to like Revolutionary War soldiers, I'm on board. Yep. Warmonger. I mean, yeah. This this episode just opens at like eight, and then it just goes all the way to eleven, and it holds that for almost the entire episode. What kind of scale are you um, using that 8 and 11 are a good numbers? They are good numbers, Chris. Don't 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 judge me. Um uh yeah, no. This episode doesn't really let up ever. Well, like no, it does not. Like even it's the best- down romance, I didn't hate. Well, it- because as opposed to uh Ray uh, and Kendra yeah. Ray and Kendra, these two actually had chemistry that was believable, and they played off each other's dialogue. Mm-hmm. Is when like fucking uh, Ray and Kendra were the most wooden, like irritable couple I've ever seen. Yeah, they just sort of sat there, and she was not nearly as charismatic as Brandon Ralph. So it was just him throwing stuff at her, and her just dropping the ball every single time. Yeah, and. It, it became irritating by the fourth episode of them trying to shove it down our throats. Um, this is and, really working well. Yeah, and the way it kind of, like, it, the way it ends with, um, I guess, him, quote-unquote, catching a feel, uh, and then her using what he said earlier in the episode about modern dating is just, like, Netflix and chill. Yep. And then he feigns dejection. But then, like, but then the, the Ruby, the the... The red slippers I thought was a nice touch to end that with because extremely thoughtful. Yeah. But evil rip, holy crap! Yeah. Holy Whoa. I mean, a, what a cold motherfucker! That's yeah. Crazy. This is this is the best villain in the entirety of this multiverse. Period. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think. With each new villain, uh, they show you how poorly done Vandal Savage was, because they still think Vandal Savage is really bad. Yeah, he just... <laughs> Vandal, is Vandal, I, uh, yeah. Sa- Vandal Savage is like, I'm immortal! We're like, no. Robin of yeah. Moxley, I trained him out to No, this episode, we really got to see some, like, serious, like, Arthur Darville, like, talent. Yeah. We got to see the full, the full Darville. Yeah, it's great to see that, like, especially after Who, as it were, where I didn't really, like, kind of credit him as a like a, a strong character because I you didn't really play one. Well he but dies like, four times, so Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Although I think he's died what, three times now? In this Dang. show? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Is that more or less than Hawkman? Um I believe Technically it's less because they kept dying technically. Because there was that yeah. one episode where it was like Four generations or whatever immediately, so kind of us. Well, Hawkman had the distinct uh, thing of getting killed when he was already dead. Right. <laughs> when after, during that uh, eyes eyes wide shut scene that Rory called it. What a fucking jobber. <laughs> yeah. And I remember I was so excited for Hawkman when they announced him at Comic Con. <laughs> Yeah, I think we all were excited, and then we then we saw the show. And then we got, and and then then we we got watched it. And you're like, oh. And then we got Carter, and you're like, oh god. And then, and then he gets stabbed again. You're just like, Pfft. and they straight up cast someone, cast a back, a bit player from Cap Winter Soldier. Yeah, I thought you said bass player at first, and I was like really confused. Was he a Winter Soldier? He was in the uh, elevator fight scene with Cap. Ooh. Yeah. He was. It, it was hard to tell because he didn't have any stubble or any scent, any kind of like mustache. Uh, it was hard to tell because I couldn't stop fangasming at Captain America putting his fist through people's faces. Yeah, yeah. I was overcome with emotions at the moment he said, "Does anybody want to get out?" And then from there, it's all a blur <laughs> of uh, just yeah, creamy, uh, creamy liquid all over your face. I'm watching that yeah. movie show. Anyway, Legends of Tomorrow. Same. 
Um, but yeah, no, no, this episode was really good. Um, it's almost like other, I don't have anything bad to say about it. Like the Christmas stuff at the end was distracting. This should have been the mid-season finale. Yeah, yeah, they should have planned things out a little bit better. Yeah. Maybe moved some of the filler episodes that they had because they had a few that really weren't like time dependent. They could have been later in the season. I, you know, I understand. Even, like even the time dependency, like the tension that was throughout this episode was just was too good to have it so. Like I said, it misplaced in the episode lineup. Like this should have been the break episode. Like because you. You would have gone out on a really high note and left everybody kind of feeling good for the next three weeks until it came back. Also yeah. really uh, dumbfounded by the, what happens to a certain what happens to a certain character down on the line. Um, or back to the line. And, uh, no, it was fine because, the, like, even, even after it was undone, like, the shock was with me for the rest of the episode. Because I was like, holy shit, that did not just happen. Oh no! Yeah. I'm talking about I'm talking about the statue. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, but, we'll get to Rory in a minute and how much he was the like the dark horse MVP of this episode. He's been um, the dark horse MVP, MVP of the entire season. And how he essentially yeah. birthed America. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that and moment where he's Mick Rory was the is the muse for George Washington's fight for freedom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gave them. He taught them how to be guerrilla soldiers. <laughs> it's it's the best thing ever. Mick Rory mm. is the forefather of the United States in the world that we live in when that is a possibility of things you can come out and say that Heat Wave from DC Comics World is a founder of the United States of America. <laughs> the statue God damn it. Bit, I, I was basically following my train in the statue bit because it was just like, it was so quick. Yeah. Um, everyone's like, yep, everything's back to normal except this is new statue. It looks kind of like Rory. <laughs> <laughs> It was so good. Jesus. Um, so much of this episode was great. Jax. Let's talk about Jax for a second, because he could easily be forgetting, forgotten in this episode with all the other people that are just nailing it completely. Um, but he is amazing in this episode. <laughs> I kind of I yeah. thought it was really funny where he was when he was following Rip with like the old-time pistol. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, what, are you, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Everyone it, it looks got cool, to though, shine so. in this episode. Um, and I think this yeah. is like... It, the writers of this show handle this team so well. Um, and it yeah. seems like every few episodes, they they shift people around into different positions and let them kind of um, take center stage. Uh, like the first Star Trek movie, the, the remake one. Everybody got a, like a button scene to show how useful they were and like kind of develop their skills a little bit. Even and the red been, shirt. Yes, even the red shirt. Um, and Legends has been consistently doing that, especially this season. And Jack got to be leader, and was not bad at it. Uh, he was a lot better than uh, Ray was. Yeah, Ray is... If I had to pick a weak link, weak link for this episode, it's probably Ray. Um, yeah. God damn it. Um, yeah, everybody else was really strong this episode. I mean, we didn't really get much of uh, Katie Lotz because she was in a Shot. coma most of the time. Well, she was being um, um, uh, Tim Roth from uh, Pulp Fiction for most of the episode. Not Pulp Fiction. Um, <laughs> Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> God. When Stein says I'm, when Stein says I'm a physicist, not a, not a doctor. A doctor. I, yeah, again. And he says How have like we not talked about the beast. opening bit, but with he, Rory? Well, oh, it's so like great. This, there's so much good in this episode. <laughs> hey, idiots. Like, look look what you missed. Who who the hell writes this crap? Like, I didn't think you could beat Damien Dark's opening. <laughs> but no, this is this is even better. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. This is like, I think, I the was... episode where, like, they, the show became self-aware, but not fourth wall breaking. Yeah. Yeah. And they're um, riding this wave of like just absurdly as far as they can take it. They're gonna ri- they're gonna ride that all the way home because they only got like two episodes left. What? They got a cut. No, because it's seventeen episodes this season. So you know, that's, full- okay, that's, I was that's told by one of short. you guys that it was thirteen episodes. I thought so too, but it turns out they 
IMDb was wrong, as it tends to be. Or look um, three, guys. Yep. Um, right. But now they're saying 17. And here's the thing. I'm going to call it right now. Even if it is 17, and all the other and the other three shows have five extra episodes to make good, or I guess actually Arrow and Flash have six extra episodes, I'm saying this is going to be the winner of the whole season. Period. But what episode of the next, what, five? Will our favorite Iceman show up? I feel like it's going to be n- not the finale or the episode before. I think it's going to be like the third to last episode. Mm. I think that's when he's going to show up. I think this and, is going to be their way of uh, getting if him. At all. Oh, <laughs> man, what if he doesn't even show up? What if like his whole appearance was just that little like cameo? Like, no, thing. I, what if that was I his whole thing? I'm like, oh my god. No, I'd be pissed, because they promised him as being part he of was, Legion. He was marketed as a member of the Legion of Doom. Yeah. I have a my feeling, guess is... I have a feeling that they're going to use this to bring him back proper to the show. No, I yeah. think this season is going to do permanent changes to every show. Yeah. Um, at least on the Earth that, uh, that you know... Right. Arrow, Flash, and, you know, Legends somewhat resides in. Yeah. I, want to um, think, I think this. I think one. this brings Thawne back full time. Uh, I think it's going yeah. to undo his season one death. Wait, which Thawne? Um, Tom Cavanaugh Thawne or no, Letcher? I think Letcher's Letcher? been around for a long time. I don't think we're yeah. going to see a Wells Thawne in again anytime soon. Okay. Um, yeah, especially because I think what he's going to end up doing is rewriting that entire section of time, essentially. Um, mm-hmm. I think he'll make it so he doesn't even have to go back because him going back stu- got him stuck in the first place, and that it snowballed. So he just he would just erase that. Right. That actually makes sense. That'd be a new, um, another character. Then HR would be gone next season. Right. And we have well, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. There's no reason that uh, the second Wells wouldn't show up, and that HR wouldn't show up. I. I just hypothesizing here, but wasn't it confirmed that Eddie Thawne, the actor who plays him, is going to be yes, in an episode or is, two? Yes, he's been marketed to return, so if if he shows up as as Eddie Thawne, you know, un, unaltered, you know, alive, has been alive the whole time, then the ending of season one is in the toilet. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. But, uh, I'm Captain Cold. My guess is when we get ripped back as a good guy, that's when Captain Cold shows up. Because um, that's the, Captain Cold is the only one that could uh, be better than this current version of Rip. Because I don't see how they could mess him up next time. But episode. it would be Captain Cold without any character development because they would have to pull him from before he was taken onto the ship. I think... Right? No, I... I think that Thawne figured out some way to get to the Time Master's place, and he pulled him out, out of that moment. Because if anyone could do it, it would be Thawne. Um, think I think the villains get the fucking spear and do what they said they were going to do. <laughs> right. And, they, and just, they, just, like, they just change everything. Right. So they pluck him from that moment in time. You know, I really hope they don't affect what's been going on with Arrow. In terms of Black Canary. Oh, yeah. No, I completely agree. Mm-hmm. As much as Good I have thing. a huge crush on Katie Cassidy, I do not want to see her back on Arrow. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Even, I don't even want to see gone. her. I don't even want to see her acting. She's not that good of an actress. Oh, she's pretty. If, exactly. if she came back as Black Siren like on Flash, I'd be fine with it. Because um, I have this working theory that when you take... Flash villains to Arrow, they don't work. But the other way, it can work. Um, Whenever you take anyone from Arrow and put them on Flash, they become instantly more likable. Yeah. Um, whereas when you put the B-Girl on Arrow, she becomes 50 times more annoying. Um, and, you know, but when you take uh, Clock King, I don't remember which show he was on first, Arrow. but he worked well uh, when he was on Flash. Really well. Because uh, he fit that story almost perfectly. Um, yeah. Okay, 
but we're on Legends still. Um, yeah. Let me see. It's hard to go into zero on Legends because, it, like I said, this this episode was just it hit once it hit once it hit the ground running, it just it didn't stop until the credits. And the, even the yeah. ending scene was excellent. Yeah, like a little Christmas. Party. Um, looking through my notes, I didn't love some of the Canadian talent. Some of the like the Washington and the Cornwallis. Oh, they're all wooden as hell. But I mean, I don't really yeah. like. I think even the guy who played George like his was, teeth was was, was oh, God. <laughs> God Alan <laughs> opened fire. God no, that was a Alan solid joke. Really you Chris, shut the that. fuck up, Beef Poof. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd ever hear someone calling their grown man a poof in my lifetime. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I think Whatever like you old... think it means, that's what it means. Yeah, so? attach, attach an, an offensive connotation to it. There you go. Yeah. Um, and whatever it is, it is not endorsed by this podcast. Exactly. <laughs> but you just said it. <laughs> Uh, but no, like no. all the all the all the extra, all the, the historical extras are always kind of like, yeah. they seem fresh off the street. Like you ever acted before? I was in a commercial. That'll do. Yeah, um, man, so many good things about this episode. Like the st- it's really the stakes that keep on rising. Like every, you think that the stakes can't get higher, and they just keep on going. Um, and it just it just like crests beautifully. Um, and I really well, at this point. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, the only thing that I would have liked more is like if Jax had like tackled Rip and started like beating his face in. That's the only way that that ending could have been any better. Or if Katie Lotz had done it, that would have also been great. Either one. Um, but aside from the moral victory that uh, of Sarah not con- convincing Jax not to shoot Rip, uh, the villains are winning. Yeah, Undis- like irrefutably winning. They've got the they got the um the compass. Uh, they were after the pieces of the spear. They got the pieces of the spear. How many are left? I think one, three, or four, total. I don't know. Wait a second. They've got at least two. I think it, it's either three or four total. Yeah, definitely. Isn't this the first time villains have like teamed up in the Arrowverse? I mean, like, in terms of like a big team, like more than four. Yes, Malcolm kind of teamed with Damien last season of Arrow. That's about as close as we've gotten. Um, yeah, no, nothing Shit, like this before. Even the rogues on Flash haven't teamed up. Yeah. Yeah. They they haven't really... Got... No, I thought the opening was really weak. And I think that it might well, have, yeah, like... But... I, I thought the opening stuff in the bar was not good. And I even thought that the actor playing Magon's betrothed wasn't good. No. I think this episode gets good when they go into lockdown and it, it becomes a mini version of the thing. The CG budget comes in. Yeah. Like everything before that is really uh, not good and really uninteresting. But once you get to that lockdown stuff, it all becomes really good. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's just the thing. It's They have the fire test. And it's really well done. The music is really good. The reveal is really good. Wynn is revealed to be a white Martian at one point. And when the he... white Martian not Wynn's actually not a he's a human still, but I mean like right. the white well, Martian yeah. that was hiding. Oh, was, so it's was like hiding second invasion. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. and his his villain turn is really, really well done. Um yeah, it was like revealed. He, like, turned on like evil, like super quick, just in that little like moment there. That actor. Yeah, and it yeah, was Jeremy Jordan. It was very good, and um, there was a reveal that there were actually two white Martians in there with them, um, and that really works really well. So yeah, it's like half of the episode, or maybe like two fifths, aren't great, um, but it, like it's a really interesting bottle episode. Um, and I, I really like it. Uh, Wait, there's bottle a, episode like the Bottle City of Candor? No, like, we only have enough money to afford two sets. Like so, Bob Angle oh. Yeah. So we're just going to stick most of this episode in the DEO and use the set with no lighting <laughs> to save money. <laughs> um, 
And then we'll use all of our money for this episode at the end, where there are the two massive fights, one with Supergirl and a white Martian fully transformed, and one with McGon and John fighting a white Martian. And they're both really they're both well green. done. Yeah. And, uh, McGon this... goes full green. She's now a green Martian. So, well, yeah. she dresses as a green Martian, as it were. She, she identifies as a green Martian. Um, uh, yeah. This skin is beautiful. Like, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and uh, this is some good fight scenes. You guys, uh, guys who didn't see it, you really, uh, you really should have seen it. Yeah, should have, should have watched it. Um, uh, should have actually did your jobs. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. but I was too busy watching Unsolved Mysteries. That is, that shit is like cracked. That's me. not important. Oh <laughs> my god, I really have issues. Like, okay, I'm not one to speak because I just totally just flaked out this week. But when someone's like. Yeah, I'll catch this show that's running currently and topical, and someone's like, nah, I spaced out and watched a show from 20 years ago. I mean, I'm watching Dexter right now. Matt, Matt Curione from Pixels does that shit all the time. You're like, hey, Matt, watch Daredevil. Matt's like, you're like, hey, Matt, go watch Daredevil. He's like, sure. And you're like, how was it? He's like, I don't know. I watched every season of MASH. (laughs) (laughs) How? I didn't make that up either. That's a true fucking story. Hi, Matt. Love you. The full, full, like, Seasons of Mash, and after that, like, I was they like, don't hey, Matt, anymore, do they? He's like, I don't know. I'm watching Matlock. God damn it! I mean, <laughs> okay, I, Grandpa. I mean, <laughs> what's next, Jag? I mean, my my profile picture is Columbo, and I watch Columbo frequently. But that's beside the point. Um, God damn it! No, that's really weird. <laughs> Who watches Matlock? Um, Matt Curione does. Yeah, he does. I guess. Hey, Matt. Uh, love you. Um, we love you, Matt. <laughs> Shout out to Matt. Mm. I was just on one of his podcasts. I can't talk too much shit about him. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have, like, anything really to say about Supergirl. Um, the ending is very Men in Black, I guess. I don't remember why. Um, yeah. Chris, do you got any, like, important stuff about this episode that you wanted to point out? I like CGI. Yeah. Yeah. That's real good. Thank you. Um, that's, that's stunning observation. Um, okay, okay. so one week plays during this episode. Um, Bare Naked Ladies, check it out. Yeah. Uh, I bought their album. Chris, Chris, you said it like it was a hot new band. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bare Naked Ladies. Their, their, their new EP out next week. Um, no, Bare so Naked it happens... Bare Naked Ladies, in... album dropping, 2001. Nerd yeah, Rock, what? yo. So it happens in this episode, and at first I fucking hated it. Because they keep because they play it as like a sting. Um, oh God! <laughs> before Kara and uh, before Kara and Alex have like a conversation, or no, no, before Alex is having a conversation with her girlfriend, and instead of like playing it and then having it cut out, it keeps on playing in the background, and it and it's noticeable. Like you can tell that it's still playing. And the entire time I was like, why are you still playing the song? This song is terrible. So wait, is it like, is it, is it diegetic? Like, is it part of the scene? Or is it it's, just I, playing over it? Playing. It's just playing. Yeah, it's just playing. That's so bizarre. What? And <laughs> then, but then, so what happens is, at some point, there's a callback. And it, and I don't remember how, but I remember feeling like they made up for it. And I felt really manipulated. And I was really angry that they made me like it. Um, very angry. <laughs> like, they gave it a really good reason for it to be playing. And I hated every second of it that it was happening. I was like, you're, you're, you're so emotionally manipulative right now. You're making me feel like this is a good thing for this terrible, terrible song. Uh, that is a, a, a haunting memory from my childhood. Um, I have that album. You hush. Wait, what album do you have? <laughs> Stunt is not a terrible album. <laughs> That's just a bad song on that album. Mm, fine. Okay, uh, I think we're done with Supergirl. Um, let's t- let's talk about Legion. Well, do we want to do Legion or do we want to do the Iron Fist trailer oh, first? Yeah. It's so good. Wait, what, what was that? Which one? That was, like, that was me. That was me. It's just like I am. I really love this show. <laughs> I can't. I don't want to. I, I Nerd. Feel like, because it's a pilot, and it's one of the weirdest pilots I've ever seen, and I mean that in a good way. In that, 
it seemed like every time there was a change of like kind of like an act break, I guess. Mm. Um, I felt like I wasn't sure within the confines of the show what was real and what wasn't. I think yes. very new X Men kind of type style. This and it, this is if if I if I just turn this on and no one told me it was an X Men show, um, I wouldn't have known. I would have no idea. I would have known. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have known. I it was really weird because I went into the show expecting it to not be as weird as the trailers because I, I was like, oh, this is just marketing. Like they're picking like <laughs> moments. Nope. <laughs> where, yeah, it's because you could do the same thing with Fargo. You could pick like the weirdest moments and make it look like a weird show. This was as described to me by someone if Wes Anderson made a superhero show. Yeah, that is that is perfect. It's very, um, uh, it's very, it's very like kind of. Uh, it's I describe colorful. It's colorful yeah. and it's kind of where I describe Wes Anderson movies as you're always feel like you're looking into a diorama or a box. Yes, he does. Um, he likes wide shots. Yes, everything feels very. Um, kind of, like I said, you're always looking at three walls, um, yes. and everything's very, almost symmetrical and colorful, and yeah. the music is fucking strange, oh, yeah. um, and the the pacing and the way the story plays out is not conventional, you're, you're leaping from flashback to present day to potentially a dream sequence, but you don't know which is happening when. Yeah. And you're you're confused as to who is who at certain points, and what and and like and yeah and like, and then eventually they just they start dropping the, the mutant word, uh, kind of a bunch of times. So you're like, okay, I, like this this is doing with mutants, but even David's powers, like I I I knew of Legion in passing before I started watching it, but then I kind of read about him, and even in this, they make his abilities very ambiguous. Well, he, yeah, um, the the um the girl thing that we thought was Mojo, um. That's actually you. Do you know what Le- what the Legion's big thing is? Like, mm. you know, no. What, what, what his powers are? So basically, Legion has uh, I forget the exact number. I don't know if there's a specific number, but he has a bunch of personalities, and each of those personalities has a power. Right. Oh, I, okay. I did read that. That's right. Yes. So that thing that we kept seeing, the, the yellow thing, is a part of Legion, and so. Probably is the manifestation of his telekinesis. Okay. Uh, that shit is creepy. Yeah. I, okay, so can you clear something up? Why is yeah. he still there? Why is he Why is he still there when she has switched bodies with him? Because that's a major uh, thing that happens in this episode. They switch bodies, but he is still in David's body. I is it... That, I believe that's his and her powers kind of mixing, because she, like, he, she said... You cannot touch my skin. So, right. I think that's her power, or that she can switch bodies. Right. But, like, because she is in David's body at that moment. But David yes. would be in her body. So, why would this other identity still be in David's body? Does that make sense? Is that a question that makes sense? Uh, or am I the only one that feels like that shouldn't work? I mean, it, it, his. Is, it's kind of nebulous. If I remember correctly, it's kind of nebulous in the comics. Mm. So okay. it might just be one of those things where it, it kind of picks and chooses where it manifests. Okay. So I mean, it's it's fucking creepy that moment. I mean, it, it's very effective. Like, yeah. Well, especially like in the when end, he... because like at the end when he looks off to that rock, and I'm like, what the fuck is he looking at? And then like I catch it, and I'm like, oh my god, it's so weird. It's you see it moving, like, fucking fucking lumpy looking shadow with eyeballs. Yeah, fucking mojo over there. He looks away and then looks back and it's like, oh god. Oh, Jesus. Go? Um, but yeah. There, but this this whole thing was so, like, in the fucking dance number, which I can't remember. Was that a dream? I can't remember the, the context of that. That's the dance number is a dream. Oh, it's it's a definitely dream. a dream. That was a dream. Because okay. why would he. Why would he be dancing in an asylum? <laughs> to a Bollywood. Okay. Okay, even even the asylum itself is like, like when he went to um when he got his visit from his sister, who at first I thought was his mother because that and like the way she's dressed right. is like right from the sixties. But then yes. they're using like there's no there's no paper; it's all like touchscreen technology and shit. Right. Um, and then he's in this he's in his tracksuit. I'm like, okay, that must be just like his clothes. And I thought he was in prison, 
And then he gets right. wheeled out, and everyone's in these track suits. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And there's yeah. Aubrey Plaza. Yeah. yeah. Um, I get the feeling it's kind of like a Batman 89 thing, where yeah. it's like, it's a mix of different styles and things. But like those two old people behind him, those must be other personalities. Because nobody yeah. else notices them. Um, I, would, I would assume so. Like, I think the whole point of it is like we're not supposed to know what right. he's seeing. Yeah. Well, there's a, I don't, and, and even at the end when he's like, is this real? Are you here? And then like right. you get kind of a convincing answer. And then even the teaser for next week is like, no, that's real. I, I don't even, I'm still not sure. Yeah. I'm convinced that when the people come to save him, that's all real. That's, um, yeah, that's very real, I think. Yeah. And, um, it, th- yeah, it's, like, really well done, for the uh, most yeah. part. Especially for a character I never thought would ever get his own TV show. Right. It's not, it's not what you would have expected anybody to announce, um, uh, ever. Like, you maybe could see a Wolverine show at some point in the future. I mean, or well, maybe... I brought, up, I brought this up in the fandoms, in the Facebook page, like, the narrative of... Uh, comic book adaptations are becoming stale, and this, you know, I'm so, oh, brr, so sick of superhero movies, her brr. Um, right. Once again, shut up. Um, <laughs> because we need, to, uh, we need to keep doing this. Um, right. One, we need to keep doing this. And two, uh, here's your proof that this well is not dry, because someone took something as fucking obscure as... Legion. An X-Men, Legion, an X Men character who no one talks about, who is not I mean, in the I collective I was consciousness. Of, about Legion. Yeah, who is <laughs> who is time. so who is not in the collective consciousness of the casual audience, and made a weird brain fuck uh, like super wacko drama out of it. Right, in an, and for a pilot episode that changes genres like every ten minutes. Yes, like there's, it's a musical. And then it's like a really serious, like heartfelt, emotional drama. And then it's like a horror movie for like a very good stretch of time. And it's it's scarier than most movies I've ever seen. Um, and it's like also when very mesmerizing, almost like yeah. No, it's the, it's filmed beautifully. Oh yeah. yeah. It, it like that that shot where it starts out under uh, upside down. And it's yeah. Just, like, back to. Like the normal that that was that was the coolest. Like, no, I I rarely see TV shows, let alone movies, uh, dripping with this much like just personal style. Like the the upside down shots, the uh, the the usage of slow motion to, to display like how destructive his telekinesis is. Yeah. Um, like I said, the yeah. colors, the framing, um, uh, the 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 general look, everything, everything is very all of its own. Like I, this is there's nothing like this right now. Yeah, like Noah Hawley, he's, I don't, I didn't understand what he was going to do with this show at first, but now that I've seen him, I'm like, oh, okay, he's he's just going full on, full bore, I'm not going to change for the people, for the people producing it, I'm just going to do this weird, crazy show that I can't even describe properly. Um, yeah, it's, I think this is like a perfect first episode, and if it stays at this level, um, I, th- I think it be could be great. I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, like my. I, I as a kid, I loved the X Men. Like this, it was like my favorite super team. But like now that like I feel like this is finally the adaption I wanted. Kind of like it, yeah. For one, it's Legion, who is cool, and then because well, like, it's also something that's so outrageously different. Like I think it's it's. It's fresh enough to the point where you're like, all right, this is what I've been wanting. Yeah. And for a series and for a property that Fox has essentially claimed as their own, like they've they've kind of shoved Marvel out of the picture at this point as far as like the popular the characters go. Like you, even Marvel has downplayed the X Men. Like they they killed off Wolverine for a year. Um, yeah. Is, wasn't Deadpool technically dead for a long time too? Um, yeah. Well. They're never gonna get rid of Deadpool because he makes them so much money. <laughs> yeah, um, right. But like, like the, the the Fox properties in itself, like, didn't they cancel Fantastic Four? Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's and there's the whole no more mutants thing right now with, in the comics with the, yeah. the Terrigen mess. 
Mm. Um, so for, you know, I forget where I was going with this. Legion's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good, and it's weird, and I love it. Um, I mean, I couldn't I couldn't have asked for a better show, I don't think. Um, yeah. Also, that actor, I forgot where I saw him from, but then somebody in here pointed out he was in The Guest. Yeah, and, no, he's... Yeah, uh, he is stellar. Yeah. Dan Stevens from The Guest. Um, the dude, like, when, at the end where he was, like, smiling, I was like, this dude's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can, he, I can he, like, he, feel it. He's very good at crazy. <laughs> if yeah. you haven't seen the if guest, you've seen the guest, then you, uh, yeah, yeah. God, now the I want to. I'm gonna watch that tonight. Now I know. Wait, yeah, have you not seen it? I've not never seen it before. I've, oh I've shit! Wait, did you, did you see? Netflix? Did you see your next? Yes. Same team. Same. Oh, people. now I gotta watch. And actually, it. they connect. They have a weird connection. They take place in the same universe. What? What? Yeah. Your next and the guest take place in the same universe. There's a, com- oh. there's a there's a company or a corporation they drop they name drop in both movies. I want the Australian girl versus Dan Stevens. I want that. <laughs> I want that. Oh God, I want that. I want that so bad. Oh, now that you've said it, I'm just thinking about that. <sighs> and it can happen. Um, yeah, it totally can. Um, Speaking oh. of which, I watched Split today, by the way. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, we'll talk uh, about that. Yeah. Eventually. Um, yeah. Iron Fist trailer also dropped. Yeah. Um. Oh, my second Iron Fist trailer. Right. The, the final trailer before, um, before they drop in March. Um, it's a pretty good trailer, I think. It's very bad Begins part. like. Yeah. It. It definitely gives us more information than we've gotten in previous trailers. Like, we get a really good idea of who everybody is. Um, it's very clear that uh, David Wenham from Lord of the Rings and all kinds of other stuff, um, he's, I think he's playing Steel Serpent. He's either, because he's being trained by the Steel Serpent Society or whatever, or whoever they are. Um at least that's what they suggest. He's definitely in Madame Gao's pocket. Um, but yeah. He's I definitely like that the defenders are basically going to have to fight a big army of ninjas. Yeah, probably. Potentially uh, supernatural ninjas led by Elektra. Yeah. It, it is interesting that uh, it looks like yeah, I don't know what Gao's plan is though. Like, because if Gao, if Gao knows that the hand is there, but Gao is not a hand member. She's like the they're like the Chinese alternate version it's of like the hand. Kind of like. Right. I think Gao, and you can kind of see this from her relationship with Kingpin in season one. Uh, Gao is on her own side. Gao right. does not. She's she has not, her own kind yeah. of like territory. Right. We know that she is not human though. She's like some sort of supernatural creature. Um, yeah. it'll, it'll be interesting to see if they make Danny fight an old lady. That'll be <laughs> that'll be an interesting I, moment. But she has like sick kung fu moves. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the martial arts, to me, they look really good. His power looks really good. Yeah, the, the um, bowling hands look great. Yeah. Like, they could have gone with like really fakey looking CG flame. Um, which would have really gotten boring, but yeah. it looks it looks real to me. It's like, like a glowing, uh, like yellow X ray. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it's actually flowing through his veins and stuff. Like right, that. Yes. like it's inside of him. Like it's cool. Yeah. Like, and it's thank flush. God for that Netflix budget because uh, you you won't run into that roadblock of uh, was CBS going like, well, it's too expensive. So we're not doing it anymore. Yeah, uh, and uh, bye, bye Ghostwriter. It's been fun. That yeah, was ABC. Fuck it. Yeah, Freeform. ABC. As now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these how the they fit together as a team when the Defenders happens. Um. Well, uh, it seems. Uh, what's her face? Claire has become Nick Fury. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm just imagining her with an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! But yeah, well, because a lot of people are in this. Like I saw. I saw pictures. Um, Hogarth is definitely in this show at some point. Um, 
and it looks like she's Danny's lawyer. Um, so she's going to be in this for at least an episode. I assume that we're going to get some sort of setup for how Jessica comes into things from that. Maybe I don't know. Like I, I do like that this universe feels like a universe, and this is the first show where early on I'm feeling that everything is really connected. Um, because again, we're getting Gal from Daredevil, and she was a big part of that show, even in the second season. And we're getting like these hints to other things, um, and so yeah, I'm excited, more excited than I was before, because um, I really haven't been as excited for Iron Fist, not nearly as much as I was for either shows that dropped last year. Yeah, um, and this is another property, a Marvel property, which I'm very. Um unfamiliar with um I, and so far everything they've done has gotten me into the comics they come from so i'm hoping for the same here yeah iron fist is I, I i know enough to like know some things but like i other than that i hope that it is good and that makes me want to read more iron fist because i think he's he's an underrated character like yeah and i do like that he's kind of goofy like they're yeah. kind of setting that up in the trailer. And the Iron Fist I know is from current Power Man and Iron Fist. And yeah. he's very goofy in that book. So I've seen lots of panels from that book, and I really need to get my hands on it. It looks hilarious. It is It is hilarious. They nail Jessica uh, better than anybody else who isn't Brian Michael Bendis that I've ever seen. Um, and the moments with him and Luke, or, or her and Luke, and... Danny are so great. Um, the reason I keep on posting pictures that say Marvel Netflix 2025 because it feels like where the future might lead. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Alan, are you still here? Because we, uh, yeah, I'm still here. He's like, did, no, did I followed have... Chris back to his house and killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have thoughts on this trailer? Anything that really stood out to you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm more familiar with. The other three are more familiar with he- Daredevil and Luke Cage rather than uh, Jessica Jones and Danny Rand. Right. I think the most familiar I was with Iron Fist when I when I used him and my team in Marvel Ultimate Alliance. <laughs> I mean, that's great. What did you see the trailer? Though? Did anything like pique your interest? Was there anything that, in it that was like, oh, that's really cool? It felt very season one of Arrow. Yeah, I get that comparison also. It make it does make a lot of sense. Um, a lot of plot lines are being explored in a very similar way. And like I said, that, that there was, begins. There was an article on comic book resources that uh, that had side by side. Uh, Right, no, Finn, I see. Ben Jones mean. and Stephen Amell. Right, and, and uh, Merlin and uh, David Wenham or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. I'll look that up. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like in the past, when Netflix has copied Arrow storylines verbatim, they've done it better. So, kind of all right with that. Um, right. kind of completely all right with that. It's not hard to. That's a very low bar to hop over. Well, <laughs> notice that they've never tried to copy Arrow Season 2 because that would be a fool's errand. Um, yes. But they have copied Arrow Season 3. Yawn. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, it'll be interesting to see how things go. Was there any anything else that we wanted to bring up before we go to plugs? Before we uh, get out of here? Nah. I think I'm good. Leave these people's ears to to, to reheal. Um, uh, Hunter, how about we start with you? Uh, for, for plugs? Yep. All right. Uh, <laughs> you can join the Facebook group. You just type in the search bar on Facebook, Phantom Zone. Uh, we'd really like more people to join. We'd like more discussion there. We like seeing that. Yeah. Um you can follow me on Twitter at Davenport. Uh, also, you could read my articles on the Haro. Uh, 
I'm doing on the video game editor tomorrow. So look forward to that. And uh, that's about it for me. Connor? You can follow me on Twitter at Wester Commander, even though I don't ever tweet. Just do it. Make me feel validated. And maybe I'll tweet more. Maybe. Uh, He's not making any promises, though. Alan, you got any plugs? Any? Yeah, I'm, I'm the news editor at the ha- the Harrow. Yep. Yeah, that's how you say it. We yep. are all getting we are all getting so tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. uh, I just put up a piece about the WGN America's uh, scalped adaptation for finally getting our pilot getting a director. Oh. Interesting. And right now, this if it does go to if it does get ordered, this will be the fourth, um, the fourth Vertigo series to get to be on to get a series. Yeah, to get adapted a series because they've got iZombie on CW. They had Mm. Constantine, Constantine, whatever. That's going to drive me insane. Go on. Uh, Plus Lucifer, plus... Yeah, just, yeah, those three. Yeah. All right, good good plugs, Alan. Um, You can follow me uh, at A.A. Haro. Um, I am the editor-in-chief of the Haro. So go there, and you might get some thoughts. You might not. Um, Uh... Yeah. Also, make sure you go to the phantomzone.wordpress.com. That's uh, where you can subscribe to this podcast if for some reason you're not, like a heathen. Um, share this podcast to other people. Um, find us everywhere. We right. are... US we are yep. Rate us on iTunes, even if you are an Android user. If you have an iPod or an iPad and you have the podcast app, find us the Phantom Zone podcast and give us a little rating, give us a little review. Yeah, Every no how everyone helps. Are. It's fine. Yeah, Hunter is fishing, um, but I can assure you he is very dreamy. So go I ahead. Am. Um, I'm the dreamiest. Just gonna put that out there. Um, I mean, I calm <laughs> down, Bucky. <laughs> um, Debatable. I have the best hair. That's irrefutable. <laughs> Bucky? Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, Eric Dudley, for our sweet ass uh, and the music. Yep. You get you like his page on uh, Eric the Dud on Facebook. Yep. And depending on when this goes up, the Valentine special may or may not be up. But uh, if this comes out before then, the Valentine special will be up on Monday, uh, Monday the thirteenth. Uh, so. Listen to it. Listen to it if you uh, with a significant other, if you have one, and hear that sweet, sweet daredevil love. Um, oh yeah. Definitely. Oh god, oh. yeah, yeah. Cuddle up to your significant other, but listen to us hate the fuck out of a really bad movie. <laughs> yep. Um, and Bye. I think that's yeah. I think that's all. Bye. Bye.